In this video, we're going to be discussing the alternating series test. Note that recently we've looked at series tests that applied only to series with positive terms. Both the integral test and the comparison test required that our series um, have positive terms. Um, but now we want to look at a particular kind of series that's not um, all positive or even all negative terms, but an alternating series where the signs specifically alternate between negative and positive and negative and positive or positive and negative and positive and negative. So we'll first look at a couple of examples of what we mean by alternating series and then we'll give the, the formal definition. So this first series here I have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 half to the n. So notice when I start plugging values in for n here, when n is 1 we have negative a half, when n is 2 we're going to get 1 over 4, when n is 3 we have negative 1 over 8, okay, when n is 4 we'll have positive 1 over 16, etc. So this would be one example of an alternating series because we have that um, sign pattern that alternates negative positive, negative positive. Okay? This um, particular uh, first series here is actually an alternating geometric series, just to see that it's actually similar to something that we've seen before. Okay, so what about this next example? Also an example of an alternating series. Oops. I have a sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 e to the 2 over n. Okay, so notice when I plug in 1 here, I'm going to have a positive sign, so this will be e squared. We plug in 2, we'll have a negative sign, so this will be minus e. Okay, let me actually write that as just e squared, okay, minus e. Then we plug in 3, well, again we're going to get a positive sign and we'll have e to the 2 thirds. With 4 it'll be negative, we'll have e to the 1 half, okay, etc. So another case where we could have something that's alternating, this goes positive, negative, positive, negative. So an alternating series specifically has this certain sign pattern. So an alternating series can't be like negative, 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 positive, and then some more negatives, and then a positive. It has to specifically be going back and forth between positive and negative. Okay, let's just look at two more examples to see some cases of alternating series. You'll notice in the first two, we had well, this negative here was kind of hidden inside this negative one half to the n. Here I have negative one raised to the n plus one. Okay, so you'll notice that um, a lot of times our alternating series will be recognizable because I have negative one raised to some sort of power of n. Um, in this next example, it might not be immediately obvious that this is alternating, but if we look at starting to plug in some values here, notice that when n is one, we'd have cosine of pi, and we know that cosine of pi is negative. Okay, so that's going to be negative 1 because it would be over 1 squared. Then when I would plug in 2, I have cosine of 2 pi. We know that cosine of 2 pi is 1, so this would be 1 over 4. With 3, I'd have cosine of 3 pi. That's again negative 1. So this is going to end up being um, minus 1 over 9. Okay, one more time here. If I do cosine of 4 pi, again, that's going to be 1, and that'll be over 16. Okay. So I sometimes think of um, this type here with cosine of n pi as sort of a hidden alternating series because it doesn't immediately have that negative 1 to a power, but we recognize that cosine of n pi um, is actually going to be the same thing as um, negative 1 to a power. So this is the same thing as negative 1 to the n over n squared. Okay, so if you see cosine of n pi or sometimes sine of a certain multiple of pi, that can end up being alternating as well. Okay, one more example just to show kind of the variations that we might have on our powers for negative 1. I had negative 1 to the n plus 1. This was really like negative 1 to the n. I could have written this as n equals 1 to the infinity, negative 1 to the n, 1 half to the n. Okay, I had negative 1 to the n plus 1, and this is negative 1 to the n minus 1. So what does this result in? Well, when I plug in 1, that's negative 1 to the 0, so it's just a positive 1. Then when we plug in 2, we're going to have negative 1 to the 1, so that's be negative 1 over 2. Plug in 3, again, we'll, we'll get something positive here, so it'll be 1 third, we'll have minus 1 fourth, etc. here. 
Okay. Um, if you remember, we had called the sum of 1 over n, besides being a um, p series with p equals 1, it's also called the harmonic series. Okay. And so this variation here, where I have um, this negative 1 to a power in my sum times 1 over n, this is called the alternating harmonic series. Okay, so we want to keep those names in mind because sometimes we'll refer to those series by name. Okay, so let's look at now our formal definition of alternating. We have a pretty good idea of what this means. What does the, the definition say? Well, it says that an alternating series will have either the form the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n minus 1 bn or sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n bn with the bn part being positive. Okay. This is just some notation to say so the terms alternate either positive, negative, positive in that, that pattern repeating, or negative, positive, negative. Okay, so keep watching the next videos to learn about the alternating series test.